Minecraft on Steam Deck. Everyone at some point has played Minecraft, and for good reason. Minecraft is one of those seminal games you get once every few generations. You can play Minecraft just about everywhere. You can just download it from the App Store for your phone, or you can buy it on your PlayStation, or Nintendo Switch, or even your Xbox. But I think most will agree that Minecraft is best played on PC. And with the Steam Deck, you have access to the official PC version. And naturally, with this tutorial, it'll only take a few clicks to get Minecraft set up, and to get controllers set up, and to even get mods as well. And if you like this video or any other video I've made, please like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. And check out my podcast, Off the Console. It's a cool new podcast where we talk about video games, technology, multimedia, and all sorts of other cool nerd stuff. You can find full episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube, with YouTube having exclusive short clips as well. Like most good Steam Deck tutorials, you'll want to be in desktop mode. You can access desktop mode from the power menu. Once in desktop mode, you'll need to launch the Discover app. The Discover app is the best place to get third-party applications on your Steam Deck, stuff that may not necessarily be available on Steam, like for example, the Prism Launcher. The entirety of this tutorial hinges on the Prism Launcher, which is a third-party Minecraft launcher with a bunch of different features. What are these features? Well, we'll go over them after we install it. You'll want to press install and the launcher will start downloading immediately. And of course, you can launch it like you would any other application. You can launch it through the uh, start menu or you can launch it through the Discover app. So here you'll want to select a language. Do note that some languages don't have fully translated menus. And then you'll want to select a memory allocation. Now, it's generally a safe bet to keep it default at 4 gigabytes. But sometimes you may want to increase it depending on, well, who you are. And in this case, I want 8GB of RAM allocated, so... Sometimes mods may require more RAM than normal, and that's totally fine too. You should be wary about mods you're downloading because, well, yeah, that's basically it. The next step is to set up your themes and icons and all that stuff. Just pick whatever looks nice and move on. Now this part may be tricky for some people, but you do need a legit copy of Minecraft tied to a Microsoft account. You can either click that button at the top to directly log into your Steam Deck with your Microsoft account, or you can scan that QR code, or you can type in the code on a browser somewhere else. I don't know. It's up to you to figure out how to sign into your Microsoft account. And if you don't own Minecraft on PC, then mm, you may as well buy it, okay? Once you've successfully logged into your Microsoft account, it'll fetch your Xbox information, all that stuff. And now you'll see this menu right here. You even have the option to sign into multiple different Minecraft accounts if, say, you have one. To get started, you'll need to press the Add Instance button, and here you can set up a new instance of Minecraft, which is basically a new install of Minecraft. You get to choose a number of different things. You can choose mod packs, what version of Minecraft you want to play it on, where you're getting mod packs from, and a bunch of other stuff as well. There's a lot of different options, so I'm not going to go over every single one of them. But, I'm going to go through getting a basic Minecraft install set up. To get started, you'll need to go to Custom and then select a version of Minecraft. And then, there's a number of different options. You can get a mod loader to load mods. And believe me, we're going to need one of those to get controller support. Because Minecraft on PC does not have controller support. I believe Bedrock does, but Java does not. And let's say, for example, you forget to set up a mod loader for Minecraft. I mean, for whatever reason, I pressed Fabric, but I didn't select a version, and as such, I just pressed OK, and it didn't set up with a mod launcher. There's an easy way to fix that, though. You can actually right-click your instance, and then go to Edit. And inside the Edit menu, you'll see a ton of different options. But to get a mod loader set up, you'll need to press Version, and then go to Install Loader. It's in the right column, Install Loader, and then you can select a mod loader. In my case, I selected Fabric because that's what I'm used to. And there is one more mod that's highly recommended. You'll need a mod that enables controller support for Minecraft, and the one I use is Controllify. It's a Fabric mod, which is why we installed Fabric instead of Forge. And honestly, this is where things get confusing for those that have never modded Minecraft before. Essentially, certain mods only work with certain mod loaders, like Fabric mods only work with Fabric, and Forge mods only work with Forge. And it's kind of a pain in the butt, to be honest. This unusual division between which mod loaders to get for which mods is kind of unusual, and I've never seen anything like it in any other game, period. I don't know why it is the way it is, but whatever, I guess. So, now we've set up Controlify, and we haven't really set up any other mods. 
Also to access this in game mode, you want to go into the start menu and then look up your prism launcher, right click it, and then press add to steam. And prism launcher will now be a part of steam. You can find it in the non steam game section. As you can see here, the prism launcher shows up as a non steam game and you can launch it using the steam deck. Do note that this launcher does not actually support controller, meaning you have to use the touchscreen or the trackpads to navigate, well, the launcher. So to actually launch your instance, you just select your instance and then go to launch and then it'll just launch. Now, if this is your first time launching the uh, instance, then it'll download files from Mojang servers and then just set up the game itself. But I've already done that so that it doesn't take up too much time. And then just like that, Minecraft loads. Look at that. Kind of crazy, isn't it, huh? So Controlify will prompt you to download the native libraries, and it's highly recommended that you download them. So just press yes, and then it'll download some extra files, and then it'll try to calibrate your controller. In this case, we're using the Steam Deck, of course, so it detects that we have a Steam Deck. That's pretty cool, I guess. We're gonna let it do its thing, and then we're, we're done. Look at that. Now we can actually control Minecraft with a controller. Now, outside of control support, this is a fairly vanilla version of Minecraft. I mean, I haven't played Minecraft in years, so I don't know what's new, but I think it's time for us to explore. Now, I am woefully unprepared. I really shouldn't have gone down this cave, but you know, why not, right? Ow. So yeah, as you can see here, you have a lot of context menus on the side showing you what buttons to press to do certain actions, and I kind of wish there was a way to turn that off. Maybe there is a way to turn it off, but I don't know. Minecraft is not the same game I played many, many years ago. So much has changed that I can barely recognize it, which isn't a bad thing. And one of the cool things about Prism Launcher is you can download older versions of Minecraft, older versions that you may be familiar with, or older versions that work better with certain mods. Certain mods don't work on the latest version of Minecraft, which is understandable given how big Minecraft is. Now that was fun, but what's even more fun? is modding Minecraft with more mods. When it comes to mods on Minecraft, it's quite easy to get lost in the sauce. That's why we have a bunch of mod packs, which are essentially compilations of mods meant to work in tandem, made to work together as part of a unified gaming experience. When you're making a new setup, you can make a new setup with a specific mod pack in mind, and you can get them from either ModRinth or CurseForge or even Technic. You can look for a specific mod pack in mind to give you the gameplay experience you want, and there are quite a few. You could make your own mod pack by mixing and matching mods, but some mods don't work with each other, and not to mention, some mods require different mod loaders, so if you have a fabric mod and a forge mod, you can't use them together because they need diametrically opposing mod loaders. Mod loaders that can't be used together for some reason, and I don't know why. So once you figure out what mod packs you want, you would just select it and then install it. And then ideally, Prism Launcher just installs it for you with no headaches. So I selected Craft 2 Exile 2 because why not, right? Like, I don't know which mods are good. Most of the mods downloaded, but some mods cannot be downloaded using third-party clients and must be downloaded with a web browser of sorts. You could scroll through this mod list and download them one by one, or you can do this instead. Press the Open Missing button and it'll open your web browser and a new tab for each mod that's missing. So all you need to do is just go into each of these tabs and the mod should download after like five seconds or so. And then, you know, just go through each and every individual tab. It should automatically download to your downloads folder. And then after that, you can just turn off Chrome or whatever. Afterwards, you can just go back to Prism Launcher and Prism Launcher will detect those downloaded mods in your default download folder. And then it'll just continue the setup process. And then soon you'll have a brand new instance you can play on. Another thing you should keep in mind is that this particular mod pack requires more RAM than, say, your average Minecraft install. It's recommended that you have 6 gigs of RAM allocated to this instance when you're running it. What's worth mentioning is that most of these mod packs won't come with a mod for controller support because, well, you normally play Minecraft with a keyboard and mouse, right? But of course, as per usual, we can add our own. And you can press the download mods folder to download more mods. Now, the last controller mod we used does not work here because we're using a Forge mod pack instead of, well, Fabric. So we have to use a different mod for controller, Controllable. 
It's more or less a similar concept to the last one, but it works with Forge mods instead of Fabric, as per usual. Another thing to note is that these controller mods may not necessarily cover every single function of the mod, because, you know, these sorts of mods adds new keybinds for new functions, etc, etc. These controller mods, after all, are made for a more vanilla Minecraft experience. You can also go into the settings menu to change how much RAM this instance use. You can have every single instance use a different amount of RAM if necessary. Craft to Exile recommends at least 6GB of RAM allocated to the game. And as you can see here, the mod pack sort of works. I mean, it kind of runs poorly, but there's also like over 300 mods added, so... You probably shouldn't get a big mod pack like this one, but I got one because I could. Actually, it runs a little better now. But then I came across another issue with this. It'll just sometimes crash. And yes, this will require an endless amount of tweaking, and I personally haven't dialed in all the settings yet, so it'll only be a matter of time until I figure things out. But hey, I mean, the game sort of works with controllers, so that's pretty cool, I guess. Now, as I'm saying this, there is some mod functionality that isn't accessible with the controller yet, but there is Steam input that lets you essentially map any keyboard button to any of your buttons on the Steam Deck. And also radial menus, can't forget that. So now let's go over a bunch of other useful features. First and foremost is the ability to switch skins. Due to the somewhat simplistic nature of the player model, Minecraft skins come in the form of PNG files. There's a bunch of free skins you can download off of the internet. I'm gonna go with this one here, inspired by Squid Games. It's pretty cool, I guess. You could download it, but you could also copy the image URL instead to use. At least on this website, you have access to an image link that you can copy and paste somewhere. Where, you might ask? Well, in Prism Launcher, of course. Just go back to Prism Launcher, paste your skin there, and then press Import URL, and voila, new skins. Not to mention, you can switch between skins on the fly. You could also just import it from a local file as well, if so desired. You can also use Prism Launcher to straight up generate worlds for your instances, without having to go into the game itself. Exploring Minecraft mod packs are easy, unless of course you're on a Steam Deck or a portable PC handheld. Like, Minecraft by itself runs pretty well, and you can put in quite a few mods before it starts to chug, but there are massive mod packs that are like 300 plus mods in. And, you know, the one I want to try out, you know, Craft to Exile 2, didn't really work all that well. It is kind of unfortunate too, because I want a more combat-oriented Minecraft experience. But I guess we can worry about that later. You can play Minecraft on your Steam Deck with pretty seamless control integration as well. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.